Hey readers, in this video I want to talk about the connection between transgenders and autism. All the transgender people that I encountered, they all had autism, they were all suffering from depression, they were all teenagers, and almost all of them were girls that wanted to change into a boy. It was about 95% that were girls. So I decided to look into it and see whether research has been done to this connection. So when we go to Google Scholar, then already when you type in transgender autism, then you get a lot of suggestions. And when we take the first one, so transgender autism link, we get more than 16,000 results of scientific research. So there is a lot to find about this. I didn't read all the research because that is too much. But I read a few and all of them have the same conclusion that yes, there is a link between autism and transgenders. So let's take a look at this research, which is called Autism and Transgender Identity Implications for Depression and Anxiety. And then we can see that the first line in the abstract is already Autistic traits are overrepresented in transgender populations. And then when we go to the bottom, then it says depression and anxiety were highest in autistic trans individuals. So here we can already see that my experience that transgender people are autistic and depressed is also found in research. But let's take a look at the graphs that they made. So what we can see here in this graph is that for women who identify as transgender, there is a big difference between whether they have autism or not. When they do have autism, then the rates of women identifying as trans are really high, are more than 40%. But when they don't have autism, then the rates of women identifying as transgender are really low. For men, there is not such a big difference between autism and no autism. But with men, we can also see the same difference as with women, although not that great of a difference, that the percentage of men who identify as trans are higher among men with autism than men with no autism. So that was the first graph. Let's take a look at the second graph. The second graph shows how high people would score on an autism test. And we can see here that the group of people that scored highest on the autism test were the women who identify as transgender. So the women who want to change into a man. They had highest scores of autism. And we can see that among women and among men, the people that identify as transgender, they all together have higher scores on autism than people that don't identify as transgender. So that is very interesting. Then the third graph that we're going to take a look at, it shows depression scores and anxiety scores. And what we see here is that people that identify as transgender score highest in depression and anxiety in comparing to people who don't identify as transgender. We also see a difference between people that are autistic and people that are not autistic, that people that are autistic have higher scores in depression and anxiety in comparing to people that are not autistic. So the people that are autistic and identify as transgender have highest scores of depression and anxiety. So everything we saw in this research is in line with my experience. People that identify as transgender are autistic, depressed and mostly women. And so what we saw is that women who are autistic have highest rates of identifying as transgender. And why is that? When we look into autism, people with autism, they have impaired social skills, they have impaired emotional development. This is basically the difference between men and women. In general, women have better developed social skills and emotional development than men. 
And that makes sense because the mother is the one who is raising the children. She has to have an emotional connection to the children in order to take care of them. And you know, the man, he needs to protect the family. So of course there is this difference between men and women. But in autism, when these skills are impaired, then it makes a lot of sense for women to feel more masculine and there's also research to this i found a study that says gender dysphoria and transgender identity is associated with physiological and psychological masculinization a theoretical integration of findings supported by systematic reviews and it says in the conclusions in the abstract autism is associated with masculinization and we argue that gender dysphoria may reflect autism spectrum disorder traits that indirectly lead to anxiety and to one questioning one's sense of self when we look into autism then it says in the dsm among other things, lack of social or emotional reciprocity. So this is also backed up by research. So when you are a woman, when you are autistic, and when you have impaired social skills and emotional development, then you might feel more like a man. But in the end, it's autism. And of course, these studies, they don't show causality. They only show that there is a connection between transgender people and autism and depression. And women, of course, in society, they will tell you that because of these people are actually born in the wrong body, then the effect of it is that they feel depressed and anxious. And that is also, according to society, because society is very discriminating against uh, people that are born in the wrong body. But we have a problem here because you could never, never scientifically prove this. You could never scientifically prove that someone is born in the wrong body. Why is that? Because then first you have to define what exactly is born in the wrong body. What is born in the wrong body? Your soul? Your spirit? Oh, but then it becomes complicated. Could you actually scientifically prove and measure and define someone's soul or spirit or is it something else is it your brain that is being born in the wrong body okay but then can other body parts also be born in the wrong body and does it mean that then if the brain is in the wrong body that you can take out the brain and put it in another body <laughs> no of course not then what is being used as evidence to say that people can be born in the wrong body is they say oh there are brain scans the brain scans they show that transgender people have different brain structures than non-transgender people okay that is true but autistic people also have different brain structures people that are addicted to cocaine also have different brain structures people that are addicted to watching porn also have different brain structures even London taxi drivers have different brain structures. Does that mean that you are born as a London taxi driver? No. Does it mean that you are born as a porn addict? No. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that your brain develops and it adapts to what you feed your body, what you are doing, what you pay attention to. So in the end, being born in the wrong body can never be proven and is a belief. So think about it, based on this belief that can never be proven, based on a sensation of people that might be an effect of depression and autism, based on this belief, these very vulnerable, autistic, depressed teenage girls, they get puberty blockers, which is in fact chemical castration, and then body parts are being removed, and then they're being made infertile based on a belief. It's not based on any, any scientific evidence. So think about it. Is it moral to do this to autistic, depressed, anxious teenage girls? Is that moral? And of course, it's not just autistic, depressed teenage girls that identify as transgender, but they form the largest group. So ask yourself, is it actually moral to tell those vulnerable people 
that their healthy body is the problem, that they need to cut away body parts in order to be happy again. Is that moral? Remember about 20 years ago then anorexia was a whole thing among insecure teenage girls, among depressed and anxious teenage girls. They tried to starve themselves because they were not happy with their bodies. Now the same thing is happening, but then a little bit different. They're attacking their bodies because of a mental problem. But there's one big difference, and that is that back then society wasn't supporting these vulnerable girls into starving themselves. Then people actually tried to save them. But now society is pushing these vulnerable people into permanent damage in their bodies. And there are many, many, many people that regret it. There are many detransitioners that are so badly damaged that warrant for the whole transgender hype. And because their mind was already vulnerable and now their body is damaged too, imagine what it must feel like. So ask yourself again, is this whole transgender thing moral? All based on a belief that someone can be born in a wrong body, which has never been proven? Is it moral to push people into these beliefs in which they eventually will be chemically castrated and be physically damaged for the rest of their lives? Is that moral? Ask yourself. Of course, I can say a lot more about this topic, but I won't do that right now. I will do that in the future. If you have anything to say about this topic, please leave it in the comments below. For now, I hope you learned something and keep reading guys. 